But pizza looks really burnt. I mean, that's probably what I would make as an amateur. Amateur. If you tell me he's a pro, I'd be worried. Calamari olives. Did he say calamari? <laughs> Did he say calamari olives? I put a little oregano in. You don't need oregano. <laughs> you don't need oregano. Two or three bay leaves. <laughs> you don't need bay leaf. A little bit of Worcestershire sauce. Uh, what's going on with you? It's wrong. Punto, it's wrong. What the f are you doing? Like you're a professional star, you've been a pastry chef for such a long time, and you make this? I'm very, I'm, I'm, I, I, you don't deserve to be on this channel, I'm sorry. Disappointed! In this video, we are reacting to four chefs making four different levels pizza on the Epicurious YouTube channel. Great channel, but this video, Hmm, I'm not sure. It's got over 8 million views. The same views as my Napolitan pizza, you know, from Johnny DeFrancesco, best pizza chef in the world. Why? Huh? You, 8 million people watch my video and then other 8 million people watch this video. Let's see if it's worth it. I'm Steven and I'm a level 1 chef. Level 1? I'm Beth and I'm a level 2 chef. Okay, she's better. I'm Simcas. And I've been a baker since 1973. You look serious. So I came up with this recipe basically any time my friends would come over and they said, let's spend money. And I'm like, absolutely not. We're going to make our own and it's going to cost under $10. Okay, you like to save money. It's a really special recipe because this recipe has my mother-in-law's sauce. Okay, so the sauce is everything for you? Okay, what about the dough? Sadie came all the way from Shaka, Sicily. and. Okay, so... You're telling me just because you have a Sicilian sauce, you can do a good pizza? All right. This recipe is an homage to her. This pizza has a soft, airy interior with a nice crusty shell on it and a lot of flavor. This sounds good. That pizza looks really burnt. I mean, that's probably what I would make as an amateur. amateur. If you tell me he's a pro, I'd be worried. We're going to start with the dough. This is my store-bought dough. Oh, he's cheating. Right. Store bought dough is about $2. Okay. Which is nice and ready. It's not ready, my friend. Now, if you see what he's doing there with his dough, and I'm going to do a video how to use store bought pizza. If you can see, that pizza dough hasn't relaxed, hasn't been uh, relaxed. It needs to be relaxed for at least two hours out of the fridge. You make the pizza bowl, let it rest out of the fridge for two hours. Of course, it needs to be sealed in a airtight container, you know? Because it's really pushing hard to stretch this dough, and that's not the way it should be. The dough has to rise, so I'm gonna use some active dry yeast. yeast. into our water, and we're gonna let... Wait, wait, okay, how many doughs are you showing me at the same time? All right, let's, let's try to focus here. This is a three-day dough, and this is... Three-day dough, I like it, I like it. Then we're gonna add our flour, we're gonna mix this together. I'm gonna put my mixer on low, we're gonna add some salt, I'm gonna slowly pour in some olive oil. Extra virgin olive oil. Um, homemade cooks love to put extra virgin olive oil. In a restaurant, it will never happen. In a pizzeria, sometimes I like it too. It doesn't really do anything, but it's just a, a home cook thing, you know? It's in a, in a mind, you know how to do it too. Add the yeast mixture, and the dough is just gonna to come together in a sticky mess. It's not really gonna to come together. It's gonna to be very scruffy. You can tell that it's very, very sticky, and that's exactly what you want. Yeah, you want to stick it. High hydration, I guess you're making, but yeah. I'm going to cover the dough, put it in the fridge overnight. And this gets left outside, not in the refrigerator, for 12 to 17 hours. Yeah, I'll do that too. I like when I make the dough to leave it out of the fridge as much as I can. This is going to develop flavor, and when we add it to our dough tomorrow, it's going to add a lot of nice holes in our pizza. Beautiful. Now, we're going to make our main dough with flour, water, salt, and yeast. Then, we're going to add the pre-ferment, biga in Italian. Well, this guy knows a lot about pizza, I have to say. This is like, you know, a level 99 pizza making. This is the same pre-ferment that I made earlier, only this one is 24 hours old. It's now developed and has these nice big holes in it and lots of flavor. Beautiful, beautiful. Lastly, I'm going to add some starter. This particular one has been around for about three years. This will add a lot of flavor. Talk about flavors. I mean, this, this, this dough sounds really good to me. This dough will be wet. I turn it onto the table, turning the dough into itself to get it going. 
and you're going to push this forwards and backwards on the table. Now, you're going to start pulling it into itself. Look, now i got a pizza dough right here. Oh, it's beautiful to see a pastry, a pastry chef working in the dough. It's so beautiful. Look at his movement. I'm going to oil my bowl here. We're going to cover it and we're going to leave it in the refrigerator. And that's going to be yet another way to introduce even more flavor into our dough. So now we're going to get started on the sauce. This is a store-bought sauce. This is a tomato basil. This my friend, don't be like that. I mean, that sauce is probably more expensive than anything else. Just buy peeled tomatoes. You can buy the cheapest can of peeled tomatoes, as long as they are from Italy, okay? And then you mash them or you put in a blender and that's the best sauce, okay? These sauces, they're expensive, they're not good for pizza. This gives it a little bit of the aroma that we're looking for. You can give aroma with some basil, some salt, extra virgin olive oil. First of all, get your pan hot. Then you're gonna get some good olive oil. I love to use a cast iron pan, but what is he doing with that? The oil is coming up to temperature. Wait, wait, you're telling me these people are cooking the sauce? You don't cook the sauce for pizza. You do not cook the sauce for pizza. You need peeled tomatoes. Peeled tomatoes or you can get chopped tomatoes. You know the one already crushed in the can? Cooking the sauce? <laughs> no! Simply because the, the pizza cooks in the oven and the sauce cooks in the oven. How can I say? I mean, we're not making lasagna here, okay? You want the fresh, you want the freshness, okay? So the peeled tomatoes or the crushed tomatoes, they can give you uh, as close as possible fresh experience okay you want it makes a huge difference i don't know how to explain it but if you listen to what i'm saying and you use peeled tomatoes or crushed tomatoes on top of your pizza it's gonna be so much better than using passata or than using our ready-made sauce or a slow cooked sauce it can be the best sauce you can have it can be your mother-in-law best sauce recipe but it doesn't go on pizza it doesn't go especially if you use uh home, home ovens where your pizza needs to cook for so many minutes Nah, you need to use the freshest you can get, like raw, raw peeled tomatoes. Just cut my garlic right into the pan. You want your onions. I'm just getting a little color on my onions. You don't want onions, guys, in the pizza, in the pizza sauce. You do not want onions. And then I put my garlics in. You do not want so many onions. You do not want so much garlic. It's pizza. I'm now smelling this garlic. We don't want to smell garlic. In the pizza sauce. Better smell. I understand there's no better smell. For your pasta, for your chicken, for your meatballs, great. This is pizza, my friend. Why are the wrong people on this channel showing how to make sauce for pizza? Eight, more than eight million people watch this. I'm gonna strain the crushed tomatoes because I really don't like the taste of the seeds. It's nice to crush it. That's the way it should be done. The seeds, is, I like the seeds, but it's nice to crush it. It's important to crush. Extremely important to crush your pizza sauce. In extremely important. Done by hand or the way you were doing it with the meal? In goes my whole tomatoes. That no, you crush them, the tomatoes. And you got more onion than tomatoes. Did you watch New Zealand chef making Italian tomato sauce? Crushed Italian tomatoes. This is too much. It's onion with tomato. <laughs> That's what that was wrong. The master chef from New Zealand. He did a uh, disaster. Don't follow him. Now I add about half that amount of pure. He's using a very good uh, tomato puree. For me, that's a very good brand. Very good brand. So this can I can see in the video, uh, it's got an American flag. So I'm assuming it's American. It has all, all peeled tomatoes. In Italian, it says Pomidori Pelati. Pomidori is not a word. It's Pomodoro or Pomodori Pelati, okay? Pomodori. So Pomidori is telling me that this tomatoes has never been to Italy. This label has never even touched Italy. Doesn't even know what Italy is. So I would never trust a, a peeled tomato like that. I put a little oregano in. You don't need oregano. <laughs> you don't need oregano. Two or three bay leaves. <laughs> you don't need bay leaf. You're not making a stew. It's a pizza sauce. God, I can't believe I'm watching this. A little bit of Worcestershire sauce. What's going on with you? Are you, are you? are you Gordon Ramsay friend? This is what Gordon Ramsay does. A little bit of Worcestershire sauce. On pizza, you don't put all these flavors. But what's wrong with you? It don't tell me, oh, we do what we want, it's a taste. It's wrong. There are 8 million people watching this and do it the wrong way. It's wrong. Put 
Punto, it's wrong. What the f are you doing? A good gloopy glue in there, all right? Ma che cazzo dici? It's wrong. And now you put the pepper, yeah. Fresh ground pepper, pepper in. Same amount of salt. salt. And about 10 leaves of fresh basil. Basil, basil. okay. You can put it now, a bit, do whatever you want at this point. But you put the basil when the sauce is done, right at the end. Why? Because you don't want to burn the basil. If you burn the basil, you overcook it, the flavors disappear, okay? By adding the basil now, you are going to destroy everything. You're destroying the flavors. And I'm just gonna be Italian about it and just throw it in like that. Did you say Italian about it? Italian about it? Now I'm gonna reduce temperature. When it's nice and thick, you know it's done. That's right, when it's nice and thick, you know it's done. She's making a good pasta sauce, okay? But it's for pizza! The idea of cooking the sauce for three or four hours is to take the acidity. Three or four hours? You're not making bolognese sauce. Okay, cazzo dici three, four hours? Okay, you do three, four hours, but it's too much. This sauce, one hour, maximum two hours, if you wanna really exaggerate. Four hours for tomato sauce, basil tomato sauce. You, 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 you completely killed the basil. What the cats are my friend? But go back to make pastries. Come on, go back to make croissants. Out of the tomatoes. If we put a little sugar in, we can reduce. Ma che sugar? Ma che cazzo fa? Watch the sauce. You make it bitter and acid. Oh, cazzo. I don't understand. I don't understand. Normally a pastry chef is. It's a scientist, you know, he knows. Next step is preparing the cheese. What is that? Is that cheese? That looks like butter. I like to use the mozzarella. Part skim, so it's a little bit on the help. That's shredded mozzarella, which is the fakest cheese you can get. Orange cheddar is so much better than that fake cheese shredded mozzarella. And let me tell you, orange cheddar is fake too. Just buy normal cheddar, please. Beautiful aged cheddar. You can buy truffle cheddar. Huh? Milk is white. How can you buy a cheese that is orange? Your side? I only use whole milk mozzarella. I Okay, whole milk, it's, that's, a, that's a dry mozzarella, I guess, I'm assuming, but you use it fresh. The mozzarella, I get a slice in. Bravo, he's using good mozzarella. But what does he have? Is that banana there? What the f is he doing with banana? It should be round, like a pizza. I like to put grated parmesan at the... Bravissimo. I think that the Pecorino Romano has a better taste than the Parmesan. Si, sí, bravo, Parmigiano, mannaggia. Parmigiano. Pecorino Romano, yes. I like to put some bel paese, very, very creamy cheese. It looked like banana, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> it did look like banana. So now we're gonna get our toppings ready. We have some fresh pepper. We're gonna use about half of each. This is just so we can add a little bit of color. So you're just doing the topping for your vision, like for you to see. Okay, well, I like capsicum, yes. Like, maybe you're cooking before. If you're a pro like myself, you know that you want to keep your fingers out of the way. Okay, that was close. <laughs> Looks ready. So now we're going to get to the mushrooms. mushrooms. Pre-cooked. Most toppings I pre-cook. Bravo. Oh, man, I'm going to say something right. Most toppings are pre-cooked. Why? Because the oven cooks the pizza, the wood fire oven cooks the pizza in 90 seconds, okay? So you can't cook mushrooms or meat in 90 seconds. All I put on the pizza is basil. My husband, Richie. You don't cut the basil with a knife. Why? Because if you cut the basil with a knife, you put in so much pressure on that basil with the knife on the chopping board, the flavors will stay on the chopping board, okay? And that basil will give nothing. Just break it with your hands. Two, break one piece of basil into two or three. That's all you need to do. Calamari olives. Did he say calamari? <laughs> Did he say calamari olives? Can we hear it again? Sorry. Calamari olives. Calamari olives. <laughs> Calamari olives, you invited someone that says calamari olives to your Epicurious video. But why don't you invite me? I'll do it for free. You, I, I never eaten calamari olives. The sausages, put them in the oven, cook them through. Yeah, they are well cooked. I don't know what sausages they are, but they are cooked. Here's our dough. It waited for us 24 hours. All we have to do is pinch off a piece. Yes, okay, you wait 24 hours, I understand, but you need to make the pizza balls at least four hours before you make pizzas. Why? Because, of course, it needs to be airtight in a container or a pizza container, or you can just buy a small container. The reason why you do this is because the, dough, the pizza dough needs to rest. It needs to enlarge, it needs to relax. So when the pizza dough is ready to be turned into a pizza, it's very easy to stretch. What is she doing now? She's gonna use a rolling pin. So she's gonna kill all the edges. She's gonna remove all the gases or, or everything from out of the pizza. 
And you don't want that. You want the puffy edges. Yeah, that, that's how you tell if you're a good pizza chef or not, right? Then I put a lot Deep of flour, flour on the table to make the dough less sticky. And see that pizza rolling pin? I don't want to see that. No more, guys. Your goal this year should be to not use rolling pin ever again when you make pizza. You just need to let the pizza dough rest for four hours. If it's a purchased one, I guess two hours, but I always do four hours. And you will see the difference. With your fingers, you can stretch the pizza in an easy, easy way. And I also have a video uh, how to make Napolitan pizza for beginners where I show you. You can use the back of a, um, a salad bowl, something, you know, round, to stretch your pizza. It's, it's a beautiful trick. <laughs> Too much flour, my friend. Not working. Please do not add as much flour as I did. Bravo. See, you recognize it. Bravo. Then I'm gonna push down with my fingers and you should be getting air bubbles at this stage. See, very good. The way stretching is not good because I think he's making croissants, but <laughs> he's a pastry chef. The bubbles are good, but you don't go like that. You need to push in the middle and I'm not an expert, but you, you push in the middle so you have the, you form the edges, okay? You don't want to have fingers on the edges. No way. I like to just let gravity do the job, basically. Oh, I like to do that too. That's nice. Um, lots of pizza chefs don't do it, but it's nice. I want to get my pizza up off the counter. That's a, that's a fair, uh, you just made a crust, basically. Like, it's not a, uh, the way pizza should be. Actually, it's not even round. I don't know what you did. Probably you're making fresh pasta there. And right onto my stone. Now, the stone. People like to use stone in the kitchen. And I love stone when you don't have a wood fire oven. Stone is a perfect utensil to use. But it needs to be hot. If the stone is not hot, there's no point to use the stone. The stone needs to be extremely hot in the oven. And then you take it out, you put the pizza, in this case, pizza dough on top. And it needs to start cooking straight away. The, uh, the, that needs to be hot or it doesn't work. Purposely shape this in the shape of a Christmas stocking. See, if that pizza dough rested, it would, have been, it would have been a different experience. It's pushing so hard because that pizza dough didn't rest. It didn't rest, so there's no way. It stretches, stretches so much, but it's not gonna go anywhere. It's not elastic enough. It doesn't need to look like a perfect rectangle or a perfect circle. I understand, it's homemade. I, I agree with you, yes, but that looks really bad. And that, like, the stone is cold. All it has to do is taste really, really. I agree with you, it does have to taste good, I agree. That looks good. I never put oil in my dough, I always put oil on the dough. That's a lot of oil that you put before, you know, like, you made a very, very wrong sauce for the pizza, but that very wrong sauce goes first. First! And then you put the oil right at the end. You don't put the oil first, you're not making garlic bread. Are you making garlic bread? Then okay, but you're not making garlic bread. I go with Parmesan onto my dough. I like to start with the mozz instead of the sauce. Where are these people learning how to make pizza? You need to tell me. She's putting mozz mozzarella you make the sauce first in this case you don't have a pizza oven okay you need the sauce first par bake it so you get the bottom cooked the bottom underneath the sauce cooked and then after a couple of minutes that it's cooked and you see the puff edges then you put the cheese on top this is completely wrong go and watch the video I did with Lucio how to make pizza in a home uh, oven and you will see because the sauce makes the middle of the pizza a little mushy if it goes on first. But what these people, why do you go on this channel and teach people if you don't know the thing? If you don't know it, why do you teach? The reason why I do reaction videos is not to talk about these people because I don't know. It's more about why are these people going on these channels and teach the world the wrong thing. A mistake here, have they put too much sauce on? Ma che cazzo fa quello? You put the sauce in the middle like this guy is doing it right, look at him. You put the sauce in the middle and then you spread it. I don't wanna be too stingy with the sauce. He's going with his hands. I like it, it's very rustic, bravo. This guy's doing a better job than the other guys. I don't really spread it out. I leave it in blobs. Ma che fai? I leave it in blobs. Ma che fai? Ma che fai? Ma che significa? What's the point of doing that? I like to leave an edge. Now we add the cheese. Pecorino Romano. Parmesan in the middle for my first bite. So the parmigiano in the middle for the first bite, okay. I'm gonna put my mozzarella and then I'm gonna put some bel paese. Bel paese kind of melts like cream. I'm getting quite hungry. But can you just put the mozzarella in the middle everywhere? Why is the mozzarella on the edges, by the way? You don't cover the edges when you make pizza, but... Okay. If you're feeling fancy, you can do yourself a favor and stuff some of the cheese. This guy is going to the next level. This guy is making the best pizza. 
he's just using the wrong cheese and the wrong sauce, but wow. Into the crust. So when you bite into the crust, it's a little surprise inside. You like that. I think you learned this from Domino Pizza Hut, did you? Now we want to grab our mixed vegetables. This has got so many ingredients on top, it's so heavy. Basil, a little bit of pepper. I'm not going to cut the mushrooms, I'm going to leave them in big pieces. A couple of olives. Guys, I've learned something when I was in Italy um, and I went to the best pizzeria in the world, Franco Pepe, Pepe and Grani, he's also on Netflix. Now, he, he taught me that you basically first put the ingredients, like salami, in this case mushrooms, olives, basil, everything else. You put the cheese, the mozzarella, on top, right at the end. Why? So all these ingredients don't burn and actually the cheese melts on top and you get a better culinary experience. And especially the basil, you don't want to burn the basil in the oven because if you put the basil on top, the fire um, would burn the, uh, the, the, the basil and there's no point, you don't need it. Um, so it's a very, very important detail. And I've started doing that. Since I started, my pizza is so much better. The sausages, just like this. Then I like to go back in, oil on the edge. This guy made a, a mess. A mess. Go back to microsons. That looks professionally done. I have to be honest, your pizza looks better than the other ones, yes. I think we're ready to put it in the oven. We're gonna put it in at 450 degrees Fahrenheit for about 10 to 12 minutes. That's a long time, my friend, 12 minutes. Like, if you cook your ingredients earlier and you par-baked just the base with the tomato sauce, what you have to do is you just need to put it back in the oven. Once it's par-baked, you put it back in the oven for like two minutes. So the mozzarella melts, you know? If you do it now, you'll burn all the ingredients and the crust will be too hard. And this is my pizza. 500 degree oven, 12 minutes, and it's perfect. Okay, I won't say perfect. If you look at it, the cheese kind of burned. There's no cheese on top. It looks like the pizza I used to make like 10 years ago when I was homemade, just like you. Um, and the edges actually look nice, but too crunchy. I think it's like a cracker. So it could have done better. could have done better. I, I don't care about the, the, the shape. We could have done better with the ingredients. 12 minutes. 12 minutes is too much. It's perfect. So it's not perfect. Pizza is fresh out the oven. I put it in for an extra three minutes just so the crust could get a little bit crispier. It looks so much better. Let me tell you, it's burned. Like it's all the very, very cooked and... But it looks so much better than the other one. This oven here mimics a wood fire oven. Three minutes later, approximately, we're gonna take this pizza out. You know, I'm a big fan of a lot of color on a pizza. I don't like them too bland looking. You can't burn it. Okay, so it's burned. That's probably because of the almond, but you don't have the beautiful look. It looks, it doesn't look nice. I mean, you're a pastry chef. You don't have the puff edges. You don't have the puff edges. You made the, the worst pizza, to be honest. The amateur did a great job. The homemade cook actually made a, not a great shape, but a good looking pizza without cheese and the wrong sauce. But this is a mess. This is really messy. Like you're a professional star, you've been a pastry chef for such a long time, and you make this? I'm very, I'm, I'm, I, I, you don't deserve to be on this channel, I'm sorry. Disappointed! This one's a little dark around the edges, that's fine. No, it's not fine. Okay, you can burn. Yeah, it's fine to burn the pizza because that's what happens in the wood fire oven. But the, the edges are wrong. The edges are wrong. Let's top it off with the arugula. A little bit of extra virgin olive oil. Oil on the outside. On the cuts of the olio Uzi, this guy used so much oil. He used so much oil for this pizza. It's a spaghetti aglio olio pizza. A little bit more salt. Pure salt. You put salt, Worcestershire. And Worcestershire sauce. Worcestershire. 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 Sugar. And what else did you put in there in the sauce? There's enough sauce. Plus you got the cheese, which is salty. You got the sauce, which is salty. You got the mushrooms. How much salt do you need? Only sauce, cheese, and basil on this pizza because that's Richie's favorite. Cheese does so much better job than the pastry chef, let me tell you. The amateur, I think, has made the best pizza, but this one, uh, second. It looks good. I think it looks delicious, and I know it tastes delicious. Looks good, if I say so myself. No, no, sorry, seems terrible, terrible, terrible. Mm hmm. Mm. Oh, good. That's good. But don't be fake. It does have the characteristics of a wood fired oven. Ma per favore, per favore, that sauce is terrible, the worst sauce I've ever seen in my life. Sadie sauce, good dough. You can't beat it. Please come and watch the video on my YouTube channel. I've got so many good pizza videos. This is going to be my Tinder profile. 
Just this. <laughs> The pastry chef did a beautiful dough using biga and then he f***ed it up and he added the ugly sauce and whatever. Ugh. The amateur, in, uh, he did work, he did a good job, I have to say. I prefer to eat what he did. The lady in the middle, um, I think the sauce is not right for this pizza, but I understand it's all made, it's okay. Um, cutting the basil the way, no. Uh, the cheese shoes are not good. So I would recommend the next time, if you follow that recipe, to part bake it just with the sauce and then you add the cheese, the basil, and you will have a, a much tastier pizza. That's my recommendation for today. Again, I don't know these people, I don't know what they do, I don't know who they are. I'm just talking about the way it's done and why it's got so many views if it's not done correctly. So I hope you enjoyed my reaction video. I hope you learn. Next time you make a pizza, you think twice. You think twice. In my home, I've got my oven. The oven is not getting hot like a wood fire oven. What can I do? So let's pre-bake the pizza with the tomato sauce and let's keep the edges uh, empty you know you can put oil I like the oil um, but you want the edges to puff if you have a wood fire oven or you have a, a, a rock box like I do or you know any you know, this fancy pizza oven then in 90 seconds your pizza will cook so you put all the ingredients together cook it in 90 seconds and you're done but uh, you can't learn how to make pizza in one video you know it takes time it takes lots of practice and and I'm learning every time I make pizza and every time I make pizza I make mistakes and I learn from the mistakes. Well, I make something good and I learn from that and I can take it to the next level. So you will never le stop learning. Even the best pizza chef, he has to keep learning to always stay the best because there is always someone else who knows more than you. It's fascinating, very fascinating. So I hope this video helped you. Um, so thank you so much for watching. I will see you on the next Vincenzo's Plate reaction video. E ora si mangia. Vincenzo's Pizza, not these pizzas. <laughs> Ciao.